This is Apostle Calvin Brown of Christ Be Glorified Ministries. And welcome to another broadcast centered around the kingdom of God. Amen. We preach and teach and demonstrate the kingdom of God. When the kingdom of God comes, things change. If you're a Christian, you know this. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things are of God. So every believer should be used to change that the kingdom of God comes. It increases in intensity. Amen. The light of God increases in intensity. The glory of God increases in intensity. The Bible says we go from faith to faith in glory to glory. So we are used to change. Amen. And so that's what's happening now. There's a lot of things um, changing. There's a lot of things happening. And so um, I want to just get into some of the things that the Lord has laid upon my heart so that the church can be prepared for all the change and the church can be ready for change. You know, to, to change, you know, your, your mind has to change so that your heart can change so that you can always be turning to the Lord. In 1 Timothy, is where I want to start. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. The Apostle Paul says, But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. Some translations say foundation. So the church of God is the house of God. It is the pillar and foundation of the truth. Amen. It's built. The church is built upon the truth. And it says, verse 16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up in glory. So some of the descriptions of, 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 godly, of godliness, amen, some of the characteristics or the, some of the aspect of, of godliness, amen. So the church is supposed to be built upon the foundation of the truth, amen. The church is supposed to house the truth. Amen. The, the church is supposed to be the, the, the library of the truth. Amen. So the, the Bible talks about um, the, the, the our Father which art in heaven, hallowed will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what God does. God places in this earth, amen, the truths and righteousness which are represented in heaven. Remember, God's throne is in heaven. So if God's going to rule from heaven, then the aspects of his rule would be seen in this earth. So that's why there is a church, amen. God is in heaven, but the church represents God in this earth. And so we are the foundation. We are the house of God, the church of the living God, the pillar and foundation of the truth. So when you're talking about the church, it is not only talking about a building, amen, even though the building is, is important. It is not only talking about a group of, of baptized believers, even though the group of baptized believers represents the body of Christ, which represents the church, amen. When, you, when you're talking about the church, you're talking about the household of God, the house of God, the church of the living God, amen. And so God is alive, amen. And God is represented in this earth realm through the church. So if you find truth anywhere, you're supposed to find it in the church, amen. And so what we find out is that there's much going on in this earth which is not true, amen. There, there are many lies out there, 
But the church is supposed to stand on the truth. If the church stands on the truth, then God will back up the truth. Amen. Because God is true. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. The Bible says that the truth is found in Christ Jesus. The truth is found in the Lord. Amen. And so we are the church. The truth is found in Jesus Christ. The truth is found in the body of Christ. We are the church. Amen. So God, God is going to back up that truth. The lies that are out there, that there will be a reckoning for all the lies that are out there as long as the church stands on the truth. This is, this is what I want you to, you to understand. This is what I want to get you to see. As long as the church stands upon the truth, stands with the truth, that God will back up the truth, and that affects all that which is not of the truth also. God will deal with all that. If, if the, the church is walking in light and righteousness, amen, and the, the church is purposing to be a blessing, amen, then God will back all that up. It doesn't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what the world says is true. Amen. God will back up what the, the actual truth is that the church is standing on. And so that, that has to be our foundation. The foundation has to be the truth. Amen. And so in Psalms chapter 11, Psalms chapter 11, beginning with verse 3, it says, If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Amen. So we said that the foundation is that which is of the Lord. The foundation is actually the truth of the word of God, the wisdom of the word of God, all the ways of God is, is the foundation, amen, that the church is, is built upon, amen. And the devil is always assaulting the foundations of the Lord, amen. But we know God is not going anywhere. You know the devil can't touch heaven. Amen. So down here in this earth realm, he's attacking the foundation that God has tasked the church to stand on those righteous foundations, to hold forth those righteous foundations. And God will uphold his foundation. Amen. The Bible talks about how that that, that God establishes things in righteousness. Amen. Righteousness. By righteousness, things are established. Amen. But in unrighteousness, it is not established. Amen. So it doesn't matter how much lies, how many lies, how much unrighteousness is in the world. If the church is willing to stand, God will continually uphold that which is true in this earth realm. And so the earth will receive the benefit of the church walking in righteousness. Verse four, it says, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold the eye and his eyelids try the children of men. The Lord trieth the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul hateth, amen. And so the Bible talks about how God tries the heart. Amen. The Bible talks about that the, 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 the furnace for gold, the pot for silver, but the Lord trieth the hearts. Amen. So in this earth realm, God is trying, he's purifying his church. Amen. So that the church would be faithful, that the church would have fidelity, that the church would be pure, that the church would be righteous, that the church would be holy. Amen. So God is in heaven. He tries man. Amen. The children of men. He tries their hearts. Amen. The Lord tries the righteous, but the wicked and him that loveth violence, his soul hateth. And upon the wicked, he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone and a horrible tempest, this shall be the portion of their cup. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness. 
his countenance doth behold the upright. Amen. So God is upholding not only the upright, but is he's upholding his righteousness. The Bible says he's doing it in a couple of ways. He's trying the righteous. Amen. He's testing them, testing their hearts to make sure that they are pure. When the righteous go through any sort of test, temptation, or trial, they're supposed to come through on the other side pure. In other words, they're supposed to hold fast that God is true, that God, the Bible says, is justified in his saying. That when God is tried, he is seen righteous. So when you go through a test, it is to show that God is righteous. How you respond will either show to the rest of the world that God is righteous or you are not upholding the truth. God will always be righteous. But to the world, you were not standing and you did not allow the righteous, holy God to affect the earth to affect mankind. Amen. So this is what is happening. Um, the Lord showed me a couple of things. Amen. The word of the Lord came uh, to me and he showed that he is shaking foundations. You, you know this in Hebrews chapter 12 toward the end. The Bible talks about how God is shaking everything that can be shaken so that that which cannot be shaken shall remain. Amen. And so the Lord has shown me that he is shaking foundations so that he may show which foundations are not of him. In other words, God is uncovering foundations. He is, he is revealing what is of him and what is, is not of him. Amen. He's separating that which is right from that which is wrong. Amen. That which is righteous from that which is unrighteous, amen. And so the Lord um, showed me that he is shaking even the foundations. He showed me Washington, D.C., amen. He says that, that he is shaking the foundations of capitals, amen. Beginning with America's capital, amen, which is, is Washington, D.C., amen. So he's uncovering are revealing what of the foundations of Washington, D.C. are of him or what is not of him. And much is not of him. There's much that has been hidden or covered. Amen. And so foundations are what a thing is built on. Amen. And so God is a spiritual builder first. Amen. So God builds, amen. The Bible says, unless the Lord build a house, they labor in vain, amen. So God builds along with those who are co-laborers with him. So God builds it and we are co-laborers with the Lord and we declare, we testify that this is the Lord's building because we, we built, amen, using his foundation, the Bible says, which is Jesus Christ, which is the word of God. Jesus is the word. And Jesus is made wisdom unto us. And Jesus shows forth the ways of God. Amen. And so the pattern, amen, comes down from heaven. Jesus was sent from heaven, amen, to save mankind. Amen. So, so the pattern of what God builds is from heaven. It's seen in heaven. So if, if you don't have a heavenly vision, Amen. If you're not able to see spiritually, you, you, you're not in tune with the ways of God, how God builds a thing. Amen. So he showed me Washington, D.C., that he is shaking foundations, uncovering foundations, and then he's using the capitals of the state. Amen. So every state, amen. I remember when I was in grade school, we had to learn all the states and all their capitals and be able to recite amen at any time whatever state to 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 name the capital amen if we were given groups of states we would have to know all those all those capitals amen so it is speaking of government that god is a god of government amen the bible says of his government 
And of his increase, there shall be no end. So governments are supposed to be attached to the kingdom of God or bowing to the kingdom of God, acknowledging that God's kingdom is right and righteous in the land. Amen. That God has a right, amen, to build in the land that which is right, amen, to produce the, the divine order, amen. The kingdom of God produces divine order. So God showed me that he's shaking Washington, D.C., the foundations. He's shaking the capitals of the state, amen. In Mississippi, our capital is Jackson, Mississippi. So he's shaking the foundation of Jackson, Mississippi. And he also said that he was dealing with those, those governments, amen. What is he doing? Jesus is the chief cornerstone, amen. And so the, 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 the beginning part, if you wanted to, to build a building, amen, and this was known in olden, olden times that the, the cornerstone had to be right. If the cornerstone was right, then the stones that would come up beside the cornerstone would be right, amen. And so if the cornerstone, the measurements was right, it was balanced, it was, it was level, amen, then the other stones would be right. And so it's, it's speaking of truth, amen, in the land. There are many lies in the land which are pretending to be the truth. They are converting themselves to be the truth. And many cases, the church has agreed with those lies that those lies are the truth, amen. So God is a God of government. God is a God of foundation. The foundation, amen, of the truth is supposed to be the church, amen, the pillar, the ground, the foundation of the truth is supposed to be found in the church, amen. And so God is straightening some things, some things out, amen. So he says he's shaking the foundations of, he's dealing with, the capitals, amen. So you'll begin to see news coming out of these capitals, even of, of exposing what is a lie, amen, because the church is moving in alignment with the Lord through prayer and through prophecy, amen. So through prayer, amen, breakthrough prayer, not just prayer, <laughs> Amen. And I'm not trying to put down prayer. I'm talking about the prayer that agrees with heaven to break through, to bring heaven into this earth. Amen. The, the, the spirit of slumber keeps the church from travailing in prayer. Amen. And so God is awakening the church and he is sounding the alarm in urgency and we're, we're receiving the help of the Holy Ghost to help us to travail in prayer. Amen. And also the prophetic word, when the prophetic word goes out in truth and that prophet stands with that word and that church stands with that prophetic word, then it shakes the foundations of the wicked. Amen. So he says, upon the wicked, he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. So you'll see the wind blowing. And it says, for the righteous Lord loveth righteousness, and his countenance doth behold the upright. Amen. So the righteous foundations will not be destroyed. God will not allow it to be destroyed. So there are movements of God, amen, that against what is coming against his righteous foundations, amen. So in the book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, Isaiah chapter 55, and beginning with verse 7 through 13. It says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let them return to the Lord. So God is, is returning his church back to him. Amen. The church has had to return unto the Lord. He says, and I will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, 
Nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down in the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth in bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Amen. So first God talked about his ways and his thoughts are not ours. And then he begins to speak about his word, that his word is likened unto rain. His word is likened unto snow that brings about budding or, or the result of fruitfulness. Amen. As the rain comes down and snow from heaven and does not return there. The, you know, y'all who, who know science, where you said, well, the, the water evaporates and go back to the cloud. God is talking about something higher. He's talking about that which is from above. Amen. So even though he's using the example of rain and snow, it is obvious that God is talking about that which comes from heaven. His word is forever settled in heaven. Amen. His word, amen, comes forth from heaven. You know, when God sends his word, amen, he sends a, an apostle or he sends a prophet or evangelist or pastor or a teacher, he gives them a word from Mount Zion, amen. And so that word does not return unto God void. It says, so shall be my word that goeth forth out of my mouth, that's verse 11. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So the word of God is like precipitation, rain and snow. It falls down to the earth so that the earth is not dry. So the earth is not empty. So the earth is not void. It causes the earth to, to spring up and to begin to produce exactly what God wants it to produce. Amen. For you shall go out with joy and be led out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Amen. So I want you to see what the rain produced. This is what the rain produced. For you shall go out with joy. <laughs> And you shall be led out with peace. Mountains and hills shall break forth into singing before you. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. So it is, it is you going out with joy. Amen. It says, instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree. And instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Amen. So the rain and the snow falls down to the earth and produces a harvest. This natural harvest is actually a spiritual harvest, which speaks of us, the church. Amen. Having the joy of the Lord, having the singing and the praising and the clapping. The Bible says that we are trees of righteousness, oaks of righteousness, speaking of the strength of the Lord being in the church. Amen. So all these trees, instead of thorns and briars and thistles, which speaks of the curse, it shall be that which is of the Lord, which is righteousness. Amen. So we're, we're talking about the, the natural rain, but we're, we're also actually talking about the spiritual rain. Amen. So the natural, amen, even when we see the rain, we, we thank God, we give praise to God because we know it is the rain which sustains life upon the earth. So the precipitation, the rain and the snow, but just like when the Lord speaks of marriage, he says, I'm, I'm talking about Jesus, I'm talking about the body of Christ. When the Lord is talking about rain, he's talking about his word, amen. Amen. He says his word will not return unto him void, but it will prosper in the thing whereunto the Lord sent it. Amen. So the rain, the snow is precipitation and precipitation produces the fruit. 
Amen. So the rain produces seed for the sower and bread for food. Okay. So the word of God is also called seed, but the rain produces seed and food. Amen. And so I'm here to tell you, amen, or to show you that the rain represents God's righteousness, the faithfulness of God, the goodness, the goodness of God. The rain represents the goodness of God. When God begins to rain down his goodness, and rain down his blessings, and rain down his righteousness, amen, it causes the, 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 the body of Christ to spring up, amen, to be strong, Amen. And to be able to receive from the Lord out of God's goodness, you're able to receive seed to sow. And you're able to receive bread or food to eat out of God's goodness. As God's rain down his goodness, you are able to receive the seed, amen, to sow, which produces more. Amen. And you're able to receive food to eat. So God takes care of both. So rain, snow represents precipitation. So the word is precipitation, which keeps the earth from drying out. Amen. It keeps the earth from becoming a wasteland. The word of God, the truth of God keeps the earth from becoming a wasteland without the truth in this earth. Amen. Without the church standing on the truth. Amen that people will go about their own devices. They, they, will, they, they will lean to their own understanding without, without the truth, amen. They won't have any hope, not any Bible hope. They won't have any vision. The Bible says without a vision, the people perish. They throw off restraint. They have no divine order. So the earth descends into chaos. The earth descends into a wasteland where there's no moisture, amen. And the word of God is that moisture. In Amos, the book of Amos, amen. Praise God. I was laughing because I have a son named Amos, amen, named after this prophet. Amos chapter eight, verse 11. Amos chapter eight, verse 11. It says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Amen. So famine is because there is no word. Amen. Lack of word, lack of precipitation, spiritual precipitation. And so lack of moisture, amen. So famine is, is drought. It is, it is dryness. It's a lack of food and water. Well, it is a sustained time of the land not producing because of a lack of rain or, or snow, which causes hunger, which causes longing, Amen. Which is supposed to lead to the considering of one's ways. Always in the Bible, famine was attached to something. There, were, there was not a reason why there was not famine. Amen. You see clearly in the Old Testament, every time there was a famine, usually it was because people had turned their backs on the Lord and began to serve idols for their sustenance. And God would have to show them that those idols are dumb idols. And he was the most high God. He said, I'm God. I'm the one who sustained you. You want to depend on idols? I'm going to show you what idols are going to get you. Amen. And so there would be famine in the land. Amen. The land would become uninhabitable sometimes. So as the land begins to continue to dry, it would become uh, um, as desert. Amen. Not producing anything. And what once flourished could become a desert. Amen. So it was a lack of regard for God's word, God's ways and God's wisdom, which causes spiritual 
famine. Amen. He says that as the rain and the snow falls down from heaven, returneth not thither, so is my word. It does not return unto me void. It prospers anything where I'm talking. We, he sent it. So we are dependent on the Lord for physical rain and spiritual rain. Amen. We are dependent on the Lord. We cannot, in this earth, we cannot get beside ourselves and say we don't need God. So the rain is like a sign, amen, that we need the Lord. Farmers know this. They need the rain. Amen. So they are attached to God in covenant. Amen. The covenant of rain. God looked, amen, for someone to till the ground, the Bible says, Genesis chapter 2. But he had not found, um, he had not caused it to rain because he had not found someone to till the ground for him. This is not the, the sweat of his brow. It's talking about being in covenant with the Lord, that God wanted Adam to be in covenant with him, to depend on him for the rain, and God would show that he is faithful. He's like, you do your part, I do my part. Amen. You love me with all your heart, all your soul, your mind, your, your strength. Amen. And I will faithfully give you the rain. You hold fast to the truth. Amen. And I will faithfully give you the rain. No interruption, no famine, no lack, no hunger, no dryness, and, and no leanness of soul. One thing that a drought does, you know, if things do not change every day, what's the weather report? No rain. Next day, what the weather report? No, no rain, just dryness, just continual dryness. There is a longing within man for rain or for change. He just, he just wants something to change, amen, from this monotony, amen. And so this is what God is showing by the rain, amen. The physical rain symbolizes the spiritual rain. Spiritual rain represents the word of God which produces righteousness. Amen. The word of God produces that which is right in God's eyes. Doesn't matter what men are doing in this earth. God is about what he calls righteous. Amen. So you got to get with God's righteousness. The Bible says you got to submit to God's righteousness, not go about your own ways, not trying to go about your own things. Amen. Because you are being separated from God by not acknowledging that God is the one that gives that gives the rain. Amen. And so dryness, this is what we began to see. Now, when a man is is under duress, when 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 there is dryness in this earth, it is it is up to someone to be sensitive in heart and say, this ain't right, <laughs> amen, and begin to turn to the Lord and seek the Lord, amen. Even within our own lives, if, if there's a longing with this, within us, amen, if, if there is dryness and longing, we have to seek the Lord to see, amen, what are we actually looking for that the Lord will supply? Or the Lord will take care of that, that longing within us. Amen. God is the one that satisfies the longing heart. Amen. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the desire is achieved, it is a wellspring, a wellspring of life. It provides moisture. So that longing within us, God provides the moisture. Now, the world and everything that is that is in the world is the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. It cannot satisfy. Amen. And so as long as you think it can satisfy, you, you're like a dog chasing his tail. Amen. You, you're never quite getting there. Amen. You're never quite satisfied if you think the world and the trappings of the world and the things that you can lust after will satisfy you, you know. Everything will be seen as skeletons, amen. You, you pursued a, a person in lust and passion, but, but it's like a, a demon. It's like a skeleton behind it, amen. You, you pursued money 
and, and, and you coveted after money. And if truth be told, you loved money and that you would even shade things a little bit. If it could keep the money coming, you will never be satisfied and that money will never be enough. It'll never, it will never, I don't care how much you cheat or steal or whatever, it will never be enough. Even if you said that I gained it, honestly, amen, if you made the money your desire, Jesus is the only desire that can satisfy you know, so it will never satisfy. So you, you'll be wasting time in this earth realm, chasing the wind, grasping at, at the wind. Amen. Grasping at vanity. Amen. In Proverbs chapter 8, the book of Proverbs chapter 8, beginning with verse 30. Through 36. This is speaking of wisdom. So what am I saying? I'm saying, I'm speaking of foundations. The foundations is Jesus. The foundation, God foundation is Jesus. Who is the word? Who is wisdom? According to 1 Corinthians chapter 30. In fact, it says he is redemption. He is righteousness. He is um, sanctification. So Jesus is wisdom and righteousness and redemption and sanctification. He's, he's all those things. Amen. And so wisdom is found in the word of God. So wisdom says, then I was beside him. So Jesus was with God the Father in the beginning. This is talking about creation. It says, then I was beside him as a master craftsman. And I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in his inhabited world. The King James says habitable world. The, the emphasis here that without wisdom, without the word, the rain producing, amen, the, the righteous, the harvest of righteousness, the earth is not inhabitable. It, it becomes a waste place. It becomes desolate. It becomes a desert. So wisdom was with God in the beginning. Amen. As God was creating these things by his wisdom, building by his wisdom. It says, now, therefore, listen to me, my children, for blessed are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and do not disdain it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my door. So you can't wait. Every time God opens, amen, you're ready to receive, amen. And you open up to the Lord, amen, to let the King of glory come in. You, you open up your hearts. You open up your gates, amen. And you're waiting daily at God's gates, amen, to receive wisdom from him. For whoever finds me finds life. And obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me roams his own soul. All those who hate me love death. So those who hate the word, they love death. Those that hate wisdom, they, they love death. Amen. And so God is trying to make a distinction between the, the wicked wisdom which is in the world and his precious wisdom. The Bible says that we're supposed to count more precious than silver and gold and precious stones or precious metals. Amen. And so if we go after the world's wisdom, we're not showing that God's wisdom is above. It actually came from above. So it is above all else that is called wisdom. And every other wisdom is supposed to bow to the Lord. Amen. To his wisdom. Amen. And so it, it talks about how that, that wisdom was with God from the beginning as he was creating the world. It makes the world to be habitable, amen, not a desert. So we said that the, the rain and the snow, amen, which comes down from heaven and return not thither, so is God's word. It does not return unto him void. It causes the earth to prosper 
and bring forth and bud, amen, even to produce seed for the sower and bread for food, amen. So it's, so I want you to keep it straight, even though I'm using the natural and the spiritual. It's simple, you know, scientifically. Rain, amen, causes the earth to bud, amen. So spiritually speaking, that rain is, is the word of God, which is the wisdom of God, which causes the earth to bud, to bring forth the fruit of righteousness, even in his people, amen, produces that joy, <laughs> you know, that we had, a, one of my kids had a dream one time that it was um, where we were staying, that they had a dream that I was coming out of the woods holding a, a cat. We had a little kitten that had got lost. Her name was Joy. But the, the whole crux of the matter was this, that I was wet with the rain of God holding Joy or coming out of the woods or coming out of the wilderness. We were coming out of a wilderness time and now it began to rain and there was a physical rain, a, a, a deluge, a big physical rain that corresponded with that spiritual rain and there was supernatural joy that we all had, that my family had as I was holding joy. Joy had gotten lost. <laughs> Amen. And so we found her. She came back. And, and, and just like the dream, we, we did find her. She came back like, like the next day or sometime around that, that physical rain. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so what am I saying? I'm saying rain produces a righteous harvest which the, the righteousness which is of the Lord and it does not return unto him void it, and it includes us. The harvest includes us also that, that we are trees of righteousness. Amen. That we have joy. Amen. That, that we, we, we go forth singing and clapping and dancing in joy because we know the truth and we stand we stand upon the truth. Amen. So it is the height of pride and arrogance to believe that you cannot make it without God. So just as the earth cannot make it without the rain, it becomes a desert. It becomes, the Bible says, a haunt or a creeping place of beasts. It's talking about the demons. Amen. That, that ferocious animals and beasts, a desolate place without the rain, amen. Even the cities become overgrown, amen. And so the, the beast or the demons, the demons come in. It, it is not a pretty sight, not a pretty life. It's not nothing that you want. The more that people expound lies and want you to agree with lies, I want you to understand the worst things get, amen. Morality, all that stuff, as it goes down, I want you to notice how terrible things are. Don't, don't agree with the lies. They want you to believe that, that one plus one does not equal two or two plus two does not equal four. They want you to believe lies and they have to have the church to believe it, to sanction their lies. But God will back righteousness and God will back, back to truth. So, so the more that people accept the lies, amen. We we in America we say, you know, the the uniparty or or the liberals or the left, but it's it's more than that because when you get into labels, you get off, you get all emotional, amen. You get emotional about the R or the D beside the name and stuff like that. When it is supposed to be foundation, it is supposed to be that which is of the Lord. Amen. It is supposed to be that which is of the word of God. Amen. To, to, to straighten out all that other stuff. Amen. You don't look at the, the other stuff. You look at the things that are of God and get the foundation straight. Amen. To bring other stuff on righteous foundation or to build on righteous, righteous foundations. Amen. So it is the height of arrogance to believe that you can make it without God. It is the same as believing that the earth can make it without the rain, which is of the Lord. Amen. 
the, the, the more you double down on that, the drier it gets. The more you say, I can make it without God. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. That's, that's a fool, amen, that says there is no God. Or that they can make it without, that we own this earth, this man, that we can control the weather. We can do this. We can do that. You know, we control health. No, you don't. <laughs> man, you don't. You don't control the health. Everything that you do is for the love of money. Amen. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and pride of life. Without, without the Lord, from a kingdom perspective, you understand that if it is not that which is of the wisdom of God, then it is of necessity of the wisdom of the devil and the wisdom which is of the world. Amen. So without the Lord... That you're not righteous. Amen. So you're not producing that which is righteous. The reason that you're doing medicine is to make money. Amen. And so you, you go after it that way. Amen. That, that you make medicines that causes effects that you need other medicines to control the effect that you cause from the original medicine that you made. Amen. And so the church, listen, there's, there are certain things, and, and I'm, I'm trying to speak wisdom to the church. You don't necessarily mess with, so to speak, amen. God is righteous. His ways are righteous. So you can say that and you can testify of that, amen. But other stuff, don't call other stuff good or righteous if it is not of God. The Lord, it is of necessity. It always gravitates to that which corrupts, always. And if it's, it's the Holy Spirit that preserves life, amen, and it's the spirit of the world, which is Satan, which is the way of the world, which corrupts life, amen. It's, it's really that simple. Once, once you learn God's ways and the ways of the kingdom, the devil would love for you to endorse and embrace things that are not necessarily the Lord. Remember what God does. God's foundations makes right everything else. You, you must build on God's foundation. Amen. So if it's not of God's foundation, then it is not of his wisdom. Amen. If it's not his wisdom, it is the wisdom which is of the world. Amen. So famine shows that someone has forsaken God or turned from him and served idols. Amen. So God's word is like rain. It shows the faithfulness of God. God's rain shows his goodness. It is, it is a testimony that God is good. So the physical rain and the word of God, the wisdom of God is a testimony that God is good. In Acts chapter 14, the book of Acts, chapter 14, verse 17. It says, the apostle Paul says, nevertheless, he did not leave himself without a witness and that he did good, gave us rain from heaven and fruitful seasons filling our hearts with food and gladness. So again, we see the joy, amen. We see the harvest. We see that God gives seed to the sower and bread for food. He gives harvest, which produces seed, and harvest, which produces food, amen. We see this also in, in Corinthians, I believe, um, that how God gives um, seed to the sower and bread for food. Amen. So the rain was a witness. God did not leave himself without a witness that he was good. Amen. Giving the rain from heaven. So, so the rain rep represents or shows that God is good. Dryness, famine, it, it shows that there has been a lack of rain. Now, there is a lack of rain when people turn their backs to the Lord. Amen. So that's where famine come from. That people have forsaken the Lord. Let the wicked man forsake his ways. The Bible says Isaiah chapter 55. Amen. And, and let the wicked man forsake his thoughts. Amen. And so 
Man's ways are in this earth and his thoughts are in this earth. But as believers, we are not to align ourselves with the wicked. We are to forsake those ways and to forsake those thoughts and to, and to wake up that this land is desolate, man. That man, the cities are messed up. The, the folks are hurting folks, killing folks. There's violence, amen. There's not a regard to, for life, amen. And where there's no regard for life, then there is no life flourishing, amen. And it's up to the church to stand with the truth. When people put out ideology which causes famine, there are ideologies which cause famine. The Bible says that we are to cast down every thought argument, reasoning, every high thing which exalts itself against the knowledge of God and to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Amen. So the Lord, he gives rain from heaven and fruitful season, season so that there is not famine. Famine is not the will of God. And yet there are physical, natural famines and spiritual famine that where there is not the offspring of righteousness being seen in this earth. Amen. So the church has to take its place. The church has to be oaks of righteousness, trees of righteousness. The church has to receive the rain, the goodness of the Lord, the, the word of God and the wisdom of God and produce out of the word and out of the wisdom. God's word does not return unto him void. Amen. In 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. It says, And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants, inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except by my word. So he spoke the word of the Lord, which in this instance produced famine, which was a witness against wicked Ahab and Jezebel and leading God's people into Baal worship. Baal is where they thought they got the rain. The Baal means master. So they bowed to Baal, which made the devil, in essence, their, their master. Baal is an idol, you know, but the devil is behind the idol. Amen. So instead of worshiping God, the altar of the Lord was torn down. Instead of worshiping the Lord, they were worshiping Baal. And so the word of the Lord came by the prophet. It says it's not going to be rain or dew except by his word, which would be God's word. The, the prophet, the man of God, would only speak by the word which was of the Lord. And then in chapter 18. So this, it did not rain for three and a half years. And then in chapter 18, beginning with verse 41, 18, 41. Then Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink. For there is a sound of the abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. Then he bowed down on the ground and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now and look toward the sea. So he prayed. He was praying that it would rain now because... Now, now check this out. It's the time of rain, okay? And yet he is praying... God is going to do that which comes forth from the prophetic word and from the, the type of prayer which breaks through, even though it's the time of rain. So we can learn a thing. It's time of rain, but it looks dry. And so he bows, puts his, his head on his knees and begins to pray. Amen. And so he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. So he sent his servant out. The servant said, I don't see anything. And seven times he said, go again. Then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Now it happened in the meantime 
that the sky became black with clouds and wind, and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rode away and went to Jezreel. So Ahab was in his chariot, but the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah supernaturally, and he girded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. So he outran a chariot supernaturally. Amen. So this is where we are. We are in a supernatural time. This is the exact time that we are. There was desolations in the land, dryness, because the world had put out decrees and things. The church agreed with it, and it caused the land to be dry. It caused the land to be desolate. But the witness of God is that he is good. So the rain is a testimony that God is good. So that means that the word of the Lord began to saturate. Amen. Began to go forth. Amen. And that is what produced the, the, the rain of God. Amen. So the word of God produced this physical rain, which represented the, the spiritual rain. Amen. That God is good. The witness that God is good. People don't know that God is good as long as you agree with the world. People cannot see that God is good. Amen. And so the, the, this, this group, this, these two, the prayer warriors and the prophets, that they are breaking through because now is the time of rain. God wants to do something supernaturally. So he has decreed it. Amen. And now we speak what God has decreed to bring it about. We're, we're not trying to do our own thing. We're simply speaking that this is a supernatural time of the word coming forth, of the truth coming forth. So if the truth comes forth, that means every lie must be revealed. It means every hidden thing will be uncovered. I, I saw a thing, even this morning, I saw a leader, a, 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 a very renowned um, um, political leader. Um, I saw him running out of a building exposed. Amen. He was wearing only a shirt. And he was clutching that shirt. Amen. Because everything else, he didn't have on anything else. He was exposed. He heard a sound that made him come out of that building into the light of day where everyone could see that that one that they thought was good was actually evil. And so this is what we're going to see. So this is a prophetic word. I mean, I've tried to unpack this word to give you understanding. Maybe the Lord, maybe the Lord will give me an opportunity to speak again. But this is where we are. Amen. This is the time of the word coming. This is the time of the truth coming forth. Amen. As rain. Amen. And God is, the Bible says, what he does, he rains down righteousness. So God is raining down righteousness. He's showing what is righteous, which in return will show what is, what is unrighteous. Until God rains down righteousness, the two seem to be dwelling together. Amen. And so this is a prophetic time where we hear the sound of the abundance of rain. We have to move quickly. This is a time of suddenness. This, what's, what God is fixing to do is going to happen so suddenly. You'll see the sign, and before you can even react to it, it's already upon you. You will see the sign of it. And then before you can respond to that little cloud the rain shall be upon you. Amen. And so it's a good thing. <laughs> Amen. As God begins to rain down righteousness, to give us righteousness, to cause his fruit to spring forth. This is harvest time. And so God's fruit will begin to spring forth. Amen. And there will be much exposure of what you thought was the truth, even the, the, the child of God, even the church will see that many things that they thought were true were a lie. And so now, now you have to respond to that. Amen. You have to let the lie go. You have to actually, you know, renounce it, denounce it. And say, I don't have anything to do with that lie for the purging of the land and the purging of the idols. So, Father, God, we thank you for that prophetic word. We thank you for what you're doing 
in this earth, Lord God. I thank you that your reign is a witness that you are good, which brings about the harvest, causes the earth to bring forth, to spring forth and to bud, Lord God, that which is more righteousness. Your goodness produces righteousness. Amen. Your, your, it is the goodness of God that causes people to repent. Your goodness, amen, produces righteousness. The Bible says, when the clouds are full, they will release the rain. I declare and decree that the clouds are full, releasing the rain, which is of the Lord. The Lord is releasing his people in China. The Lord is dealing with governments, amen, even the government of China, amen. So China was complicit, amen, and not only, not, not only chaining up their people, hallelujah, not only locking up their people, binding their people, Rabba Sandaba, but their tentacles went out across the world, especially in America, Shevaruma Sandarabu, where their ways, their ways were embraced by those who were in seats of power, Rama Sandarabu, those who were stubborn against the Lord, those who were in love with money, and those who thought that they knew better in the Lord. Now is the day of reckoning. Amen. For what they have sown, they shall also reap. Amen. And so there is a, a heavy time of reaping. Amen. Until the, the, the fullness, what is, what is necessary to correct that which were unrighteous Lies, hallelujah. Sebrobo Shandabo, Mishandabo Ramos, Viva Ramos Sandarabos, Eco Rabasendabo, Tena, Wonder of Forbashata. It shall be as if Ramos Santa, those who were in league with China, that they hit Kaba, Miser Ramos Shanta, with a twig, hallelujah. But the Lord shall hit Kaba Fer Roma Sebreba Shataba with a law, Kabashite. And they hit Koba Shataba Ramo Shata with a pebble, Kaba Sibrebo Shata. But the Lord will hit with boulders from heaven, hailstones, the size of boulders. Hallelujah. From heaven, this shall be a sign unto you. Rama Sotobo, Rama Samba. When you see Kerama Sata, hail is biggest stones, Shaba, Ramo Shata, in the land, hallelujah, of China, and in America, and other nations complicit with China, hallelujah. You shall know that the Lord has spoken, hallelujah. Sebro Mandoro Sebro Boshata Borama Sata, for the Lord shall release his people. In fact, that is the reason that God is moving, hallelujah. His precious souls there in China have prayed. And precious souls in America have prayed. And across Europe, they have prayed. And so the Lord will confirm his word. The Lord will authenticate his word. Amen. That his word is true. The Lord will stand with those who stand with the truth, amen. So the, and now the Lord will heal the bruises for many have been hurt. In fact, many have died and entered into the presence of the Lord as martyrs. And the Lord says that the blood of his saints are precious to him. And I hear a saying in Washington, that the tale bearers shall tell. <laughs> and it shall be a proverb. Hallelujah. That the tale bearer shall tell. Rama Rama Sikara So it shall be divulged. There, there, there are no kaya ya 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 secrets which will not be told. Rama Sembrobo for the price of one's life. 
Amen. Many Kabarama shall turn to the Lord and they shall be true. They shall have knowledge of things. Hallelujah. And it's, it shall join together. Even the little stones, Shandarabu shall become a rock slide as they, as they join together. Koburama Saba. Misando. In a, in a little Koburama Shandaba, rain shall become a deluge. Kobo Fendo Maruma Sandarabu, Kurama Sandarabu, Kidaburama Sambarabu Sandaba Koshata. Yes, I hear that, Lord. Hallelujah. And, and many shall hear the sound of the footsteps of the Lord. Hallelujah. It is, it is as if the Lord, hallelujah, the prayers. And the, and the prophetic word has released the Lord himself. Hallelujah. And, and many culprits shall hear the footsteps of the Lord getting louder and louder. And it shall produce panic in the enemy's camp. And they shall run out of the buildings completely exposed. And all shall see that they were not covered. Thank you, Father, for that word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.